So I'm going to now uh, introduce the speakers uh, for, our, for our first session. So if I invite them to come and join me on, on the stage. Um, thank you. And our first session is really to um, take full advantage, make full use uh, of the lessons that we can learn from London 2012, uh, th those amazing um, two months that we had in, in the summer, and uh, three speakers to, to, to uh, help us on, on, on that, on that uh, journey. Um, my own reflections on the games having been involved in the team as team leader for the sport of modern pentathlon, my fourth games uh, as a team leader, having been an athlete, obviously, at two previous games. Um, lessons for leaders, for me, extraordinary is the power of the compelling vision that was painted by uh, Seb Coe, the team from LOCOG, the defining purpose that then led to all of us in the UK well, really getting involved in London 2012. And the, and the promises that were made back in September, well, July 2000. And five about a legacy, leaving a legacy for young people uh, in sport uh, in the UK after the games, about having more youngsters involved in sport. I can tell you in my own small sport of modern pentathlon, we've had an 85% increase in youngsters starting to take up the multi sport and run swim elements of the multi sport of modern pentathlon. Uh, and there are a, a number of other anecdotal stories. Clearly, the, 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 the jury is out as to whether the dividend comes through, but, but it's, a, it's a promise made and a promise that I believe we have a chance to deliver. Not leaving um, white elephant facilities that are never, never going to be used again, but to have facilities that would have a legacy use or be temporary and removed. That was another promise, and I believe that's going to be delivered on. Uh, and then, of course, shifting our perception in the Paralympic Games, uh, that the Paralympic Games would be seen as significant as the Olympic Games, organized in the same way. These were, no, these were promises made and a very compelling vision that the whole country seemed to get behind. So I thought that was, that was fantastic. And the second one is about continuity, continuity of management. I think that having the chairman and the chief executive of the, of the organizing committee in place for the full period from the, from the bid through to the delivery, I think that's probably about the first time that's ever happened. Uh, and the continuity <coughs> as well as the excellence of management in delivering that project, seeing it through, committing to it, seeing it through. I think there's a lesson in there somewhere for us uh, in our organizations when we see top management changing so frequently. So a couple of things. Not everything went smoothly, of course. Uh, a rumor reached us in the Olympic Village uh, midway through the first week that at one of the delegate registration meters, meetings, the meetings where athletes are entered into competitions, the Somali team, the team from Somalia, hadn't quite realized that the sailing events and the shooting events were actually two separate disciplines. Uh, that, that was, that they did get over that. Um, and my colleague Tom Smith, uh, who was a games maker, working with the Argentinian team, who when the uh, chef de mission of the Argentinian team turned to him before the opening ceremony of the Paralympics and said, Tom, the rain has gone, the clouds have gone, the sun's come out, it's a miracle. Tom said, no, sir, it's, uh, it's because God is British. <laughs> Sorry. Tom will uh, not be, I don't think the Foreign and Commonwealth Office will be turning to you for diplomatic uh, reasons soon, Tom, but uh, it, it was clearly a successful Games. And I'm going to introduce our three speakers. I'm going to invite them to say something about London, the lessons from London 2012 as they see it, from three different perspectives. First of all, to Peter Keane, sitting at the far end of the platform, uh, performance uh, director at uh, UK Sport um, for the last two Olympic cycles, previously uh, coach to an Olympic gold medalist in cycling, the first performance director for British Cycling, clearly one of our most successful Olympic sports. Um, Peter was the first performance director that, that started that success, and then latterly the uh, architect of the system by which uh, British sport, Olympic sport, is funded, managed, supported, and challenged across the 26 sports 
that led to 65 medals, uh, the, the, the greatest medal total um, that we've had in modern times uh, in London 2012. So, so a perspective on the systems from, from Peter Keane. Uh, and then secondly to Greg Searle, uh, an athlete operating within that system. Um, Greg, um, Olympic champion back in 1992, famously with his brother Johnny Searle and a distraught Gary Herbert on the medal podium, who 20 years later returned to Olympic competition uh, to triumph uh, with a medal at the London 2012 Games. So we'll hear from Greg about operating in that system. And then from Adrian, um, finally, to give us a, a third position, a perspective as a commentator, BBC commentator for swimming um, and notably uh, in the open water swimming event, um, also an expert on ornithology, I think, uh, Adrian. Um, but Adrian, Adrian commentated uh, at the Games, was an ambassador for Team GB involved with the team, uh, but also speaking from a business perspective. So those are the three different um, perspectives we have. We'll then have a chance for Q&A. Um, we'll see whether there are any questions that come up on the Twitter uh, feed, uh, but there's always the old-fashioned hand as well, so I don't mind either way. So I'm going to ask each to speak in turn, and then I'll step back in and we'll, uh, we'll do some Q&A. Thank you. Peter. <laughs> 